How are you defining being American? Boy, in, in this age, you know, the, I, I was actually having this thought because because of the this circ this political circus that we're we're looking at, and I said to myself, you know, for the first time in my life, um, I'm ashamed to be an American. Um, I, I think what's what's come out of of all of this is um, how really divided we are as a country, and how. Uh, everybody loves to say, oh, you know, we're the melting pot and we love everybody. And no, you don't, man. No, you don't. No, there's still shit going on that that shouldn't be happening anywhere. There's people of color that are being murdered by, by, by law enforcement and never being held responsible. We see these videos all the time of like daily African Americans being killed on video by police, not by police, whatever. Being killed. And we're just like, next. We're just like scrolling. Yeah, you know, Joe, I don't have that, um, I don't have that reaction because my family was actually a victim of that. My brother Joseph was murdered. He was a, a, a cop. And he was murdered in a room that was 7 by 11, and there were five other cops sitting there with him. And my brother was shot in the head, and nobody knew what happened. So I don't scroll past. That's, that's something that, 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 that hurts. I used to stand very, very tall to be an American, you know. I took pride in that this was a place that opened its arms to people who wanted to to do better because that's what my grandparents did. You know, they they left Puerto Rico to give their children opportunity to find, to make a better life for themselves. And, um, and I said, you know, like, there's no other country like this. Now, I, I told you, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I was like, I'm like a really smart person. There's a lunatic standing in front of a podium pointing out how, you know, white people are the best. Didn't we have one of those once before? You know, he had the funny mustache. This guy has the, the, the rug. I don't know what you call that. The Pekingese on his head. All you needed was one quack on, in front of that podium talking hate and ugly and it's like they came out of the, of the walls like cockroaches you know and you see at these rallies there's people beating each other up i mean how can that be a good thing how can that what kind of leadership you know is that is that exactly yeah. what and, kind of leader will he be? and what kind of people will follow that that leader that scares the hell out of me i was talking to to a friend of mine who's gay who I, I love deeply, and um, and we were talking about the advances in the in the community and you know how great. And he said, he said to me, and I'll never forget this. He said to me, Daisy, we don't live in America. Build a great big large fence, hundred fifty or a hundred mile long. Put all the lesbians in there. Fly over and drop some food. Do the same thing with the queers and the homosexuals. And have that fence electrified till they can't get out. Feed them and, and you know what? In a few years they'll die out. It, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. It why can't people believe in the religion? Like, why can't people have faith in God, Jesus, whatever it is, without needing to inflict that upon on everyone? Anybody else? On a legal, an illegal level, like. But the thing is this, the thing is this, call God, or the, or the God energy, or the light, whatever you want to call them. Because at the end of the day, God, his message is to do no wrong to others, to live and let live, and to love. Whether you're calling it Buddha, whether you're calling it Jesus Christ, whether you're calling it Mohammed, I don't care what you call it. It's all the same message. Unless you have those crazy fundamentals that find one paragraph, you know, I think script. those are the one making these laws. And, well, that's scary as hell, because word. What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because what what happens then? 
then you have people end up in concentration camps. You have stuff like like what, what's going in Syria, uh, uh, people running to get away. Mr. Trump just arrived in Chicago, and after meeting with law enforcement, has determined that for the safety of all the tens of thousands of people that have gathered in and around the arena, tonight's rally will be postponed until another day. Thank you very much for your attendance, and please go in peace. Um, stuff like that scares the hell out of me. I, I just found out that I'm going to become a grandmother, and it it chills me to think that my grandchild will be born into a world like that. The, the world that I would like to see for my grandchild is a world, uh, uh, an America that is much more tolerant, much more embracing, and by doing that, recognizing that the more you add to the gene pool, the richer it gets. I would venture to say that um, that people like that aren't blue collar, hardworking individuals who are two generations away from having come to this country um, because those are the people that understand hardship. And those are the people that, that had the dream, had the dream that America offered. Immigrants like myself who came here have enough voice and enough wherewithal to stand up against these idiots and 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 make sure that that that, that we make that change because otherwise we're we're doomed